Hi, this is Bill Hanover, and today's mini tutorial is on two bin systems. I'm just going to make this sort of a quick and easy demonstration. There's a little bit of uh, cheesy animation, but I hope you enjoy it and I hope it's useful to you to understanding two bin systems. Actually, you'd be surprised. A lot of people visit our website looking for more information about two bin systems. So I thought this might be helpful to you. First, let me tell you what we're looking at here before we do the animation. We're looking at an operator standing by a flow rack, or a gravity-fed flow rack, whatever you want to call it. There's rollers that the bins sit on that naturally use the force of gravity to draw the bins down closer to the operator. So the operator has been consuming out of the bin that's closest to them, and they're getting close to the end here. Now you'll also notice that there's a full bin of parts behind the mostly empty bin of parts. That's the next one the operator will be consuming, obviously. We've got a couple of arrows at the top. We have full bins coming in. At the bottom, we have empty bins going out. You'll see a material handler show up from time to time, take away the empty bins, and bring back full bins. You'll also notice that this flow rack is on wheels. That's so you can easily change from one product line to another and not have a great deal of change over time in the process. Let's just kind of run through this demonstration. I'll explain a few things as we go, and I'll try to keep this real simple. As you can see, our operator is consuming parts as they disappear from the bin, and now they have an empty bin. The bin goes down to the bottom rack, and naturally through gravity, the top bin floats forward, or slides forward. Here's our material handler, grabs the empty bin, along with perhaps dozens of others, and goes back and replenishes them. Okay, refills the bins, puts it back in the top, and the cycle continues. Okay, in the meantime, our operator didn't have to go anywhere, didn't really have to do anything more than just move the empty bin out of their way. This is why it's so important to use systems like this. Now, in a real-world scenario, you might find that there could be dozens or, you know, maybe even a hundred different bins that the operator is consuming parts from. Probably not. Usually there's 10, 20 bins that the operator is taking parts from. But what this does is it keeps the operator in the process where the real value is added. Now the material handler is probably resupplying several flow racks. Perhaps they'll even bring in different flow racks full of parts as needed. Okay, we'll just let this thing continue to run for a couple of minutes here so you get kind of a sense of it. But it's pretty basic really. The operator is constantly consuming and the material handler at the right interval is taking away the empty bins and bringing back full bins. In just a minute, I'll show you some examples of what bins really do look like and some of the information that you might want to have on your bins. But I'll let this thing run for just a minute. All right, well, we got a chance to see how the system works. And now here's an example of how the bins look. Now, there are many different types of bins depending on what kind of product you're making. Lots of different colors. Some have anti-stat properties. Others um, have little separations. As you see the green one on the right-hand side, uh, you could actually use a single bin to be a multi-bin system, but that's a whole subject for another day. Okay, You'll even see the stackable ones with rollers. In certain applications, those work great. Probably the most common bins that you'll find are ones like the black one at the bottom, the blue one, and the yellow one see those everywhere you go. They are stackable and they are pretty convenient really and will fit in most locations quite well. Also notice our reorder now card. There's lots of ways to do two bin systems but let me let me tell you about two quick ones. One is to use a card like this and on most every bin there's a slot somewhere in the front, the side, the back, somewhere where you can put a little card in, usually a laminated card. It tells you what part it is, the name of the part, the part number, um, how many are supposed to be in that bin, how many bins maximum and minimum are allowed. That's something else too, but we'll get into that another time. And usually there's a barcode so you can quickly scan these for the information input into the system. A two bin system doesn't really mean that there's only necessarily two bins, but we can talk about that another time. So this little card is put in the slot of one of these bins, and when the material handler comes around, they will take the bin and the card, and they will know what they need to replenish. Now, that is for what we call non-dedicated bins. In other words, you can put the same card in any kind of bin, any color, any shape, whatever, but the card is what determines what goes inside the bin. And you can use another process where you actually take a maybe a sticky label and you assign a bin 
a part number and and um, you put the barcode on the label and the name and all that sort of thing. The same information, mo mostly, that you would have on this card. But then each bin is dedicated to a particular part with a particular quantity. Okay, so this is one way of doing it. There's lots more, I promise you. You really have to do what works in your system and what makes sense in your environment. There are other things to consider, like how often the material handler will be coming around to replenish the bins, the quantity of parts that you want in each bin, and how many bins you really want to have in your system. Well, we can talk about those things another time. This was just a simple demonstration on two-bin systems. There's a lot more we could discuss. There's lots of other ways of doing this, but I wanted to give you sort of a flavor for one of the ways that I found to work really well. I wish you the very 